Vlog day 223. Snow on sunny days is always a very pretty thing. These berms, however, are like growing, they're like walls. talking about has been the sheer fact that I really really hope that I can get this visa. I know I've talked about getting the visa and I know that I have I'm, I'm obviously really excited about it but I but there's a sense of vulnerability if I talk about the actual hope behind it because I'm this not guaranteed that I'm gonna get it like this is the week that I'm gonna find out Monday through Friday whatever I don't know like they, they might overnight it to me at any time my passport might show up with a letter saying eh, and it might show up with a visa inside of it and I won't know until it happens. And so the fear that I have in sharing is not, part of it's like letting you guys know, hey, I have hopes and dreams again, that just might not come through. And part of it is also just the fact that they might not come through. Like for me, like putting them out there and actually talking about them makes them that much more real. And if they're that much more real and they don't happen, like how much more disappointing is that? But at the same time, that sense of hope and that, that desire for them makes them so much more tantalizing and also more healthy. If I can, or healthier, more healthier or healthier. Eh. We can't spell check what we say as we say it, unfortunately. But the thing is that like, if it makes it that much healthier for me to share why I'm excited for the possibility of going to France, maybe it's worth talking about a little bit. Maybe I should talk about it a little bit. And I've been thinking about that all day. Like it's one of those weird things where I'm like, uh, do I talk about this or don't I? I would really like to share with you guys, but then it makes me so much more, I need to do it. I have a number of different dreams uh, and hopes for this whole French thing, um, but I figured I'd highlight a couple of them just because I feel like if I share them, like I said, they're more real and it's a little bit more scary, but at the same time, like I don't wanna withhold this stuff and I feel like that's, it's fear driven. One of the really big things in my life right now is wanting to make sure that I don't make decisions based in fear. I wanna make them based and other things, I don't know, but fear, definitely not in fear. I don't want to not do things or do things because I'm afraid. And genuinely, I'm afraid to share these things with you, not because there's anything even particularly terrifying or vulnerable about them. They're actually really fun. It's more because if I say them out loud, what if they get taken away from me? And if you guys know about it, what will you think of me if you know that, oh, he wanted these things, but they didn't happen for him? And that's... That's really what makes them scary. So, number one, I'm just excited to resume the life that I already have in Paris. I have a few different groups of friends in Paris that I really, really care about. I have an apartment in Paris. I have a life there. I have things I like to do, places I like to go, coffee shops I like to sit in, places I like to have picnics. There's just, there's a world there that I've left behind and I really want to reclaim. And, and it's so much more, there's so much more going on there for me than there is here in Spokane. And that's not a knock on Spokane, it's just that I just don't fit here in the way that I wish I did. Number two, it's not just France. I have friends in a lot of countries in Europe that I really wish I could see more easily. And France, Paris in particular, is really, really, really central to all of Europe. So it'd be really easy to travel to see my friends and to be close to them again in a way that I can't be here. I've only ever had one friend, one of my international friends, only one of them has ever visited me in Spokane, Anya, who we've mentioned before because she and I broke like my personal land speed record in the Camaro for my sister's wedding. It's a whole other story. The point is, none of my friends are gonna visit me here while I'm here in Spokane. I have to be in a more central location. They will visit me in Paris and I can more easily visit them from Paris. Three, how will I do this visiting, you ask? With a motorcycle, I hope. So one of my big hopes, and I don't know if this will ever be possible, but I really wanna get a decent motorcycle that I can travel on. If I could go six to eight hours on a motorcycle, I could be anywhere within France and outside of France, well, outside of France. I mean, I could get to the Netherlands in that amount of time. I could go anywhere 
so easily if I had a motorcycle. So if I wanted to just bounce over to Amsterdam, if I wanted to go down to Nice, if I wanted to just go see friends in a number of different places, it'd be so easy to do if I just had a little motorcycle. And then I could make little motorcycle vlogs. You could take the drone with me. We'd have a great time. You get to see more of France. You guys would make, like this would make such a huge difference for your lives too if you think about it. If I make it back to France and I'm able to travel a little bit and I get a motorcycle, think of how much more fun the vlog will be. Because you'll get to see different countries and different parts of France. Castles and churches and rivers and all sorts of amazing places. And we'll get to try different cheeses, which is probably actually like my number four. If nothing else, I just miss really good cheese a lot. All that to say, I really want to go back to France. I think that the vlog and our experience together will be better if I do make it back to France. And I may be really scared that this week I'm going to find out that I'm not going to get to go back to France. But that doesn't change the fact that I really want it and that I hope that it happens and that I miss my life there and that I want, I just want it so badly. And not sharing that with you guys doesn't change that and it won't change the disappointment and I don't know why I should hide that from you. Like that's, that's, that's a form of vulnerability that I really feel like I have no reason to withhold. And so I, I, I'll share it. Also, it's really flipping cold uh, in here. It was, it's terrifyingly cold outside right now. I don't even want to know how cold it is outside. And my watch is dead, so I can't figure it out without looking at the, you know. So anyways, we're going to find out soon enough. I'm going to go to bed.